So, Madam Vice President, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, yet again, I must report on the deeply distressing situation in Haiti. Only last week, in the latest symptomatic horror, gang members entered a neighborhood of Pont Sondé in the dead of night, setting fire to houses and gunning down residents as they fled. At least 70 people were killed, including three small babies. The magnitude of the chaotic violence inflicted on the population between the end of February and the beginning of July this year is outlined, outlined in the report before you. The designated of, uh, expert of my office, Bill O'Neill, visited Haiti last month, and his observations confirm the continued gravity of the situation. I'm convinced that the security crisis, the rule of law crisis, and the governance crisis that Haitians are enduring can be resolved. Crucial to that effort must be full implementation of the Security Council's arms embargo to prevent the supply of firearms and ammunition to non-state actors in Haiti, as well as its targeted asset freeze and travel ban. The embargo is mandatory, and it was adopted unanimously, most recently in October 2023. It is due to be renewed on 18 October. I, I strongly encourage passage of this important set of measures, and I urge all states, including all Security Council member states, to enforce every aspect in full. Weapons and ammunition are not manufactured in Haiti. They flow in from businesses elsewhere. States must do more to enforce in full the Security Council's embargo on weapons exporters operating in or from their territory. This is leading to thousands of killings, massive displacement, the complete destruction of the economy, and horrific suffering. My office has documented targeted killings and random shootings, including of children, by members of increasingly powerful criminal gangs, mass kidnappings, the forced recruitment, exploitation and trafficking of children, as well as the burning and looting of residences and businesses, gender-based violence, including sexual violence, has reached new peaks of brutality and scale, with my office documenting collective rapes, among other horrors. The number of internally displaced people in the country has risen by 95% since March to 703,000, almost 6% of the population. Attacks against hospitals, banks, police stations, schools, the main seaport and airport in the capital, and gangs' control of roads have further disrupted the provision of essential services with lethal humanitarian impact. Over 4.9 million people are experiencing acute food insecurity. In other words, while over one-third of the population are suffering severe undernourishment reflected in wasting and starvation. Three million Haitian children are in need of humanitarian aid. Madam Vice President, I welcome last week's renewal by the Security Council of the Multinational Security Support Mission. It is also absolutely crucial to ensure that the so-called MSS mission, led by Kenya, is given adequate resources and support. All security operations, including those conducted jointly by the MSS mission and the Haitian police, need to comply fully with international law, including international human rights law, and they need to be accountable. My office is supporting the development and implementation of the compliance mechanism requested by the Security Council. Together with the MSS mission, we are organizing briefings for personnel with command responsibility regarding international standards on the proper use of force, preventing sexual exploitation and, and abuse, and a principled approach to issues involving children associated with gangs. My staff is assisting the MSS mission to establish a complaint mechanism for local communities, and we will continue to work with UN partners to develop a human rights due diligence policy mechanism. As mandated by the Security Council, we will also continue to support the Haitian authorities and to monitor and verify alleged human rights violations, including any allegations of sexual exploitation and abuse. De manière plus générale, il est également essentiel de renforcer la gouvernance et les institutions de l'État en particulier la justice, la police et le secteur pénitentiaire. 
En outre, il faut commencer à s'attaquer aux inégalités et à la pauvreté omniprésentes dans le pays. Je salue l'inclusion par le nouveau gouvernement de transition d'engagement clé en matière des droits humains dans sa feuille de route. Ces plans d'action concrètes pour lutter contre la corruption et d'autres violations des droits humains comprennent des unités judiciaires spécialisées pour aider à lutter contre les crimes de masse tels que les violences sexuelles ainsi que les crimes financiers. La persistance des pratiques de corruption, en particulier au sein des institutions publiques, est profondément déstabilisante. Il est, il, est, et il est urgent de prendre des mesures à cet égard. Madam Vice President, Haiti is a small country of immense importance to our world. In terms of human rights, we can never forget its revolution against slavery and colonial oppression, surely one of the most inspiring chapters in human history. The extraordinary creativity of Haitian culture and the ingenuity and determination of so many Haitian individuals have driven outsized contributions to the economies and societies of many states. It pains me to see the deportations, mistreatment, and hateful and racist smears that target Haitians in some countries of the region. Haitians have the same rights to live free from violence, fear and misery as every person of every other nationality. In a country of less than 28,000 square meters, less than 65% of the size of Switzerland, addressing the current crisis is not an outsized challenge in either strategy or cost. On the contrary, each facet of, Haitians, of Haiti's current crisis can be addressed and can be resolved. Haiti will always be able to count on the support of my office. Thank you very much.